Hi, it's four o'clock. I think there's sound there. Yeah. And I'll call the meeting, the August meeting of the Davenport Housing Commission together. It's the first, first order of business. I'll take roll. Joyce Miller. Here. Gary Susich. Here. And I, Matt Wissingham here. So we've got a quorum. If anybody else makes it, that'll be fine. I guess our first order of business are minutes for the August meeting. And ask if anyone has any additions or corrections. Nobody has any, I'll ask for a motion to approve those. I make a motion that we approve the minutes of August. Gonna have to rely on you, Joyce. <laughs> I second it. Oh, there's your front. <laughs> no, that's okay. was only looking for a second on the minutes from last month, but well, since it hasn't been done yet, <laughs> or do you need, want to pack? All right, thank you, thank you. Oh, I'll come down. <laughs> Long distance for you. <laughs> thank you so much. I apologize to my commissioners for my tardiness. No problem. Well, and while I'm letting you look at those, I should acknowledge to the rest of you who don't know, either here in person or out in uh, TV land, that I happened to stop by the city council meeting last week and uh, unbeknownst, our co-commissioner, Joy, uh, received an award from the city for her work in her neighborhood organization, the Van Buren Park. So they gave her a certificate, and nice words. And so that was nice to see. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> in mind too. So. You never think you touch them, so. Yeah, I believe so, yes. They look the same. So if you don't have any questions or corrections, it's been moved by Gary okay. and looking for a second. I had, I already had a oh, did she? Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear her. I guess I was giving re getting ready to give her acknowledgement. So, <laughs> okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the August meeting. And actually, I think I need to correct myself. I said the meeting of August, this is September at the beginning when I called it. Right. Yes, but I said I called the meeting together for August and I was looking down at that date, even though I know it's September. So I corrected myself. <laughs> so we won't have to correct me next month. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve those minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none. We'll move on to the financial reports for 
August. I don't really have anything to report that I can think of. Um, unless you guys have questions. I know Joyce had emailed me some questions since I wasn't here last meeting and I answered those. But if Joyce, if you have any more questions regarding that, um, I can try and answer those for you. Um, I know the heritage, I still am showing you guys reports on it because we still have some lingering expenses coming in related to that, but um, that should drop off next month, I would think. And we just didn't budget anything for this year since we knew we were selling it. So that's why the budget's all zero, but we do have a few expenses. Okay. And then has anything been done with public housing? Uh... The application is in progress right now. So HUD has that in their hands and they're reviewing it. I don't know if Bruce has anything else, but. That was the last I had heard. I yep, guess. yep, it was submitted. She's kind of emailed us a few questions she had on it and um, the reviewer with HUD and we haven't heard back from her. So they still are reviewing that application to approve. Okay. Well, I didn't know if you had any breaking news or anything. So. Not, I don't, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Okay, if there's no other questions, uh, Joyce, do you want to ask those questions after we go through this? Or? We just was noticing something else here. Um, Destiny, you'd said that um, for public housing, the payroll employee benefits from Heritage rolled over to public housing. Would that also include the facilities maintenance amount then too? No, so... Um... Well, I don't know exactly facilities maintenance. I don't control the budget line items. What I was explaining to you was since the budget was gone out of heritage, we have to absorb those costs in our other two programs. So I can't tell you for sure that all of the heritage wages went to public housing. They were probably spread out between public housing and Section 8. I would have to compare to last year's budget. I, I haven't looked back at that. Um, but facilities maintenance, obviously we don't have as much because we don't have the heritage anymore. So that line item, I don't think should be much different from last year, but again, I haven't compared to last year's budget item. Okay, well now each program had its own entity, its own budget then, right? I mean, they didn't, one was over here and if another one needed some money, they couldn't take it from that one and give it to that one. It was its own entity, right? Right but we still have staff that have to be paid. So we don't have, uh, we lost one full-time employee. So the staff costs went down for that. Um, and then the rest of the staff costs had to be absorbed between the two programs that we have left. Okay. And that's all within the HUD rules. That's just the way our program operates. It, there, you know, there were only three programs. Right. Um, we sold one, so now we have the two programs left. So those are the only two programs that pay for all of our... I guess it's our... always been that way, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. We need to shuffle it a little bit. We lost an employee because this program was no longer so for some other reason. No, since we didn't have the heritage anymore... Yeah. Um, you know, we lost 120 tenants and that funding. Um, so yeah, we lost one employee so far. Joyce, I see you reading intently there. So I see you reading intently. Was she the one that oh. we, uh, somebody that found her a job? She she was able to she was union so she was able to bump bump back to her previous position at police department. Okay. okay. Well, if there's no other questions, I'll ask uh, for a motion to approve the financial reports for August. Make a motion to approve the financial reports for August. Second. Great. 
been moved and seconded to approve the financial reports for August. All those in favor say aye. 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 Post same sign here and none. Those pass. Now, this will do occupancy report for August. Public housing is still the same. We still have those two vacant units um, and we don't have any plans to rehab those with the sale. And then um, I did take off the heritage since we're no longer reporting on that. And then for section eight, you can see that we added one new voucher and not, we've added more than one, but we've also lost few people. So um, for the whole month, it averaged out to adding one more. Um, but you can see, if you look at like each bedroom size, you can see where it's gone up and down um i don't know bruce if you want to mention the program we're looking for oh, new yeah. landlords um i'm sorry can you we're we're looking we are looking for new landlords or more landlords to um help us out with leasing to our section 8 program so we are actually in the work uh works right now staff here at city hall we are working on rolling out a program to try and incentivize, incentivize, what do I want to say? Incentivize. Incentivize yeah. <laughs> um, landlords to lease up our Section 8 tenants. So um, nothing is concrete yet. We're still in the works with it, um, but that will be coming, I'd say, probably in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. Hopefully by next week we'll have the definite concrete deals, uh, details of how that's going to work. Um, but we are, if you guys are, you know, ever talking with landlords that aren't currently accepting Section 8, um, there is going to be something coming out in the next week. And I'm not trying to be secretive about it. We just don't have the concrete de details yet to share. Um, but we will have that next week. What is the difference? Is there a significant uh, difference from what is offered to the landlord? I, it, if I may, so uh, I'll I'll back up maybe one quick step too. So um, first, the funding source for um, this um, actually isn't um, vouchers, isn't the voucher program. Instead, the CARES Act that Congress approved, um, they approved you know lots of different batches of funding, and one of the small batches was for public housing authorities across the country to um, whatever it is prepare. Uh, there, there's several things that you can use the funding for that are related to COVID. And we didn't really, we, we used, I think, very small bits of it, um, really didn't have a huge, I, we hadn't identified a huge use for it up until here just a few weeks ago as, you know, we've been talking through how it, we're, we're finding some of our voucher holders who have been given a voucher are, are having some challenges finding units that they can lease up. And while this may not completely solve it, we did some quick research and Destiny found some other cities were using their CARES Act funding as a signing bonus for the new, for landlords to encourage perhaps landlords who have never leased up Section 8 and participated in the Section 8 program to participate. So um, we're still, that's part of the reason why it's still a little in flux. We're still trying to research well with what's a good amount, how does it work, and what do the agreements look like, and what's the timing of the structure and all that. We do know that we have to spend that CARES Act money by the end of December, I believe. And of so, this of this year, yeah. So what we're anticipating, well, that's why we're gonna launch it here in a week. So, um, but what we're thinking we're going to do is um, uh, have a big marketing push probably next week that would encourage over the next two months for landlords to sign up and we'll try to make it as streamlined as we can. Um, and our program operates the same way it always has. So the difference, I think, back to your question, um, Yolanda, is it, um, it, it's just a sign-on bonus for someone to lease up a unit that wasn't previously rented to a Section 8 client. So you can be a participating uh, landlord who, let's say you have 10 units and two of them are currently leased to Section 8 tenants and you have a third unit coming open in November, you could participate in this program, just like a landlord who might have 10 units and none of them have rented to a Section 8 uh, tenant, and you could rent one of all of your units in theory, you know, but I mean, if you had a unit coming open in October, November, December, right, whereas what we're thinking, 
um, you'd be able to sign up for this program and get a little bit of a sign-on bonus. But other than that, then you're just part of the normal housing choice voucher program. And so it would just function like normal. It's just this little extra money to kind of hopefully incent some more landlords to say, hey, this could this could work out. So. How much, how much, uh, how much money is it as far as the CARES Act that makes you we have, and this is rough numbers, we have around 200,000 that, um, and we had a little bit more than that, not that much more, it's probably 230 some, I can't remember ultimately, but we have around 200 that we can still spend. And um, we'll just see how many landlords get excited by it and use up. it. We're, we wouldn't have spent it anyway, you know, um, at the rate we were going, we, we were just not able to to burn through it very quickly. So. So this is, we think, a great pilot to kind of see how it works. And there, there are some other grants that uh, Destiny was um, identified too here a couple of weeks ago that are a little bit longer process to go through. But if this works out, it may be, maybe we can pursue one of those more longer term opportunities to get some more funding for the sign-on bonus. So a nice little pilot we're trying. That's nice. I would assume that those landlords that might have a additional unit or two would be easier because they know the extra hoops that you have to go. I've never been through it, so I don't know, but I know you have to be more compliant than a regular landlord, which is good, right? Because that's public money. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's really hoops. It's just that we do a inspection biannually. Um, so if you talk to any landlords that, you know, are concerned about anything, please have them call because I know there's a lot of, um, you know, not correct information out there on the streets that we'd love to clear up. And there's really nothing extra you have to do for us. But, you know, we do do the HQS, the Housing Quality Standard Inspection. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just to make sure that everything is in working order for the tenants. It's right. Which landlords have to do anyway. Correct. Uh, correct. You know, depending on what the rental history is and how often you have to have to get right. it. So. so whether it's a house or a rental, you know, or all landlords. Yeah. yeah, it'll be open to all landlords. Yeah. So we're just looking, trying to bring in some more landlords that are willing to um, accept the HAP contract. Have you seen an increase or a decline in the ports in the from port, uh, your mic's off, sorry, I can't, that's okay, I'm so, I feel like I'm so far away. Did you say uh, from, from, from ports? Yeah. Oh no, our, we have ports come in regularly. Yeah, there hasn't been a decline. I think I just had four in the last two days. Yeah, no decline in ports. But no big increase either? Um, it's just a kind of normal. What you're used to. Yeah, what we're used to, yeah. It might, it'll slow down, usually slows down in the winter, just not, Nobody you know, they don't want to move, move. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah. yeah, but otherwise, no, our ports come in pretty regularly, but we are, you know, we do need more housing. We are pulling from the waiting list, so we're putting more people on the program, so we need more housing. Have you seen, um, uh, a decrease, obviously, in landlords because of COVID. They might have lost their, their units or their... Yeah, I don't know that we've properties. necessarily seen a decrease in landlords. I think the problem is that we're putting more people on the program. So I think that's kind of where the difference lies. Um, I I mean, we've lost one the one landlord that everybody's aware of, but the Crestwood. But I mean... Other than that, I'm not afraid. I'm not aware of any landlords we've technically lost or anything like that. And, and I would concur. I think I think you're right. Anecdote, and we don't have any data really to support what I'm about to say. But anecdotally, um, we, we, you hear, you know, there, there's word of mouth, and, and we hear from some folks that during COVID, up until very recently with the eviction moratorium, that there may have been some, may have been some landlords who left units vacant because they weren't sure that if they did rent to someone and it ended up being a challenge, they had less control over being able to evict. It was at least a perception amongst, anecdotally amongst, you know, I'll say two or three folks that we heard from. But I would concur with what Destiny said. I don't know that we have any data to substantiate that necessarily. Um, it's just a guess that, you know, there may have been a few more units 
lying vacant during COVID because they were worried about all the challenges that they might, you know, maybe they were worried if they had to go in and do inspections in the early part of the virus, you know, and, and didn't want to, you know, have to deal with that or, or make it uncomfortable for a tenant to, and maybe just left it vacant. I don't, you know, I mean, it's possible that there were, that numbers dropped a little bit on the supply side, but um, we'll see. I mean, hopefully this will be a way we can, you know, while we can't diagnose everything that's going on, this, this program might be one way to at least um, goose a few more folks to get into the market. And the eviction moratorium has now ended, so that may also assist with, if landlords were concerned about not having control, maybe they will feel more like they have control now. I don't know. Well, not necessarily that. It, it, my question was more in lines with um, the landlords maybe not being able for, um, to pay their loans that they oh, have. Oh, true, maybe. right. That, that's right. what I was trying to get at. You yeah, know, if, if they right. lost their, um, you know, places, Sources their, of income. yeah, you're right. Of, you know, COVID, and they yeah. weren't able to pay, so. Well, and, and relatedly, this is probably what you're saying too, but yeah, I'm sorry, I missed your point, but in addition, uh, along those same lines, what if they went through an inspection with city rental inspection and needed to make some repairs and didn't have the funding to be able to do that, then the unit sits vacant too for a while until they maybe have the money to be able to make those repairs too. So, so yeah, I mean, it all, there's lots of different factors going on, I think. But, but you really haven't seen any effect as far as well that's good not, not that not, not that i'm aware of no. yeah not that we've discussed in meetings or anything like that <clears throat> no not, <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry i just want to point out too um along those lines kind of a pitch for us um nice thing for landlords is you know through the whole covid thing um we were able to continue paying their full rent you know, whether it was subsidized or the tenant was paying their portion because it is income based. So it's kind of a nice thing for those landlords to know that even if um, the tenant loses their job or, you know, has any kind of downfall because of COVID or anything at all, um, the subsidy from the housing choice voucher will pick that extra money up. So they're always going to get the full rent that they're asking. But I just kind of, that was kind of a sidebar I was, um, from the occupancy report. So I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that that's going to be coming out as related to uh, Section 8. But otherwise, you can see, I mean, we're continue, we're still trying to add numbers to our Section 8 program. We're pulling from the waiting list, um, doing what we can. We're absorbing vouchers. We're not billing anybody. So still trying to put more people on the program. And the waiting list is still... So very good. long, yes, yes. Um, unfortunately, we're not getting very good responses from the people we are reaching out to, um, which is kind of disappointing, but you know, we're doing what we can to contact them. We're gonna start emailing the ones that we do have emails for to try and reach them another way besides the mail. Uh, so we are pulling from the waiting list actively. Okay, are there any other questions on the occupancy? If not, I'll ask for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the occupancy report. Second. For the month of September. Great. It's been moved and second to approve the occupancy report for the month of August. Those, did I say that? No, I said September. Oh, okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, that passes. And we're on to discussion. Joyce, you had a couple <laughs> questions, I understand. Yeah. Okay, these are pretty much going to be for Bruce. Uh, with the sale of the Heritage, they had said that like a million dollars was going to go towards the um, Juvenile Assessment Center, which that hasn't been completely decided on yet, but I take it that this amount is still kind of back for it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, they also had, it was supposed to be 4.5 million for multi-pronged approach to addressing vacant or abandoned properties. Is that being in, implemented or still in the works? That, that's the part that they have uh, the council's decided to pause because of the American Rescue Program dollars. So they're while they're not identical, the American 
um, I'll just call it ARPA. Um, ARPA is what we've been referring to it as anyway. The ARPA plan that the council passed back in August, I think, or July, um, set aside, uh, I'll, it's roughly, I don't know, I think it was $2 million for neighborhood stabilization and $2.1 million for vacant and abandoned properties or something like that. Um, so the, a, a similar dollar amount aimed at sort of similar types of activities. And, you know, there's a lot of staff time and, and working with different partners in the community to try to flesh out that program with this whole set of rules. And ARPA has a timetable where you have to spend that money by, I believe it's December of 2024. So given that there's around a similar dollar amount that now is targeted towards some of the same kinds of activities that we would have been doing with the 4.5 million or so in heritage proceeds. And the heritage proceeds do not have a clock ticking on them. So the council made the decision um, to sort of hit the pause button on the heritage proceeds and sort of bank that. And then let's spend the next few years on ARPA and see how that goes. And then with any luck, in fact, I just came from a meeting on this as well, with any luck, we can build out that program that, you know, figure out something that works, maybe work the kinks out a little bit over the next few years with the ARPA funds. And then um, if it's something that we can simply implement in other neighborhoods or expand upon, then we'll already, we'll be able to plug and play with some of those heritage proceeds dollars. So, so that's, that's just a broad brush. And I know that doesn't say a whole lot, but at least it gives you the impression of where I think the heads are at. We just, we haven't built out even the ARPA details yet. We're looking at different ways in which we could accomplish some things. So it's exciting and it's, it's all still there. Um, so it's not bad news at all, but um, it might be a, a bit of time before we know definitively what we're doing with the heritage dollars. So. And I was just kind of curious, um, at the one city council meeting, there was a gentleman that still lives down, I don't know if they still call it heritage or not, but he had some complaints. And these are kind of complaints that he had given like back in February. Now, I did some research on the new owners, and yes, they have a lot of um, units that they rent, take care of, but there were a lot of negative remarks from other people that were exactly the same thing that this gentleman was saying. Now, was there any problems when they took ownership of it that should have been addressed, that needed to be fixed, or anything like that that you know of? You mean in terms of the city fixing things before we sold it? Yes. Oh. I, I would say not. I mean, again, I, our facility staff does a, a pretty good job of maintaining things. So, I mean, I'm, I, I, I'm not aware of any big things that were there. What I've heard, um, and, and I, this is probably the case in lots of different facilities I know too, and probably was the case when we owned it as well from time to time, is, you know, some of those small, I mean, if, if you're short on staff, you probably start not doing some of the things that have the least impact. So, um, and I don't know that we encountered this a ton, maybe in the early months of COVID, where we were pulling staff to be able to deal with some of the new protocols that were kind of new and fresh. I'm guessing we probably did less what vacuuming of the common areas in the heritage, you know? So, I mean, and I'm just giving an example because I don't know any of this definitively, but I think those kinds of things, um, I know we experience as property managers, facilities maintenance would, when you have those short staff periods, my guess is that, um, you know, knowing that we're about to sell it, it could be that we didn't vacuum for that two week period, you know, or something, I don't know. But I don't know of anything big that um, really came to mind. I, what I will say, and I don't, I wasn't at that meeting, I don't know definitively what um, the citizen might've been talking about or the tenant might've been talking about, but. So he had, he and another tenant down there, the one thing they brought up wasn't little, it would, had to do with an accumulation of garbage. Oh, garbage, That, that yeah. wasn't getting picked up like it used to. Yeah, yep. and, which we had heard that complaint as well. We are understanding, not, I, depends on how much in the weeds you wanna go on this, but um, so stop me um, if, you're, if you, you've heard enough. But um, the city, no, normally a large apartment complex would have to have private hauling with right. their own um, uh, waste uh, disposal firm and dumpsters and everything. 
um, because the city is does pick up garbage um, and this was a municipal owned facility we just hauled our own dumpsters out because we have the staff and the machinery to do that right so um, I think it was a little bit of a even though we, we did tell them in advance I mean I, I don't think it was a fault on our part but I, I think this firm is used to these larger facilities having a private hauler and just kind of felt like well we'll just sign a contract on day one with your private hauler and we should be good to go and so what I think they did was that probably the last week before they moved in, I think they uh, started calling around because they figured they could just sign the agreement. And, you know, it takes a while to get into somebody's queue to be able to do this. In fact, I think we have kind of a specialty dumpster, don't we, that's in the basement because the, or in the first floor because, because they have those chutes. Yeah, the chutes come yeah. down. So I'm guessing that there was a little bit of a lead time problem where they, the new managers had to, get all those logistics ironed out with a hauler and maybe even get some quotes and figure out who did it and who didn't. And I think, I could be wrong, but I think that's what contributed at least initially to the garbage issue because they couldn't, the hauler couldn't start for like two and a half weeks. So they were, you know, they were, oh no, now what do we do? You know, and there's nobody there to, to do it for them. So, so, but my understanding is they did get, I think they did get somebody under contract. So whether or not that hauler is coming frequently enough or something, those are all details that the private property manager and owner are gonna to have to work through with the hauler, but. You would think with the number of buildings and properties that this new owner has, they shouldn't have problems like that. They've, I mean, common sense. Yeah, I mean, I. I don't know. I'm not sure either that staffing is short. I mean, that's what we've heard from them. And I, and I know it's all over in lots of industries. I think they needed to expand staff to, to take on this additional asset. And I think they had real challenges leading up to the sale of being able to get new staff on. Um, in fact, it was a, a week after the sale before they actually had finally hired somebody. So they were moving a manager from a different asset a different property out of state to kind of come in temporarily and help because they didn't have anybody to fill the position you know so i, I again time will tell i mean they, they, we did vet them they i i saw some complaints online as well i saw lots of positive things from their from their tenants and from other um, assets that they manage across the midwest um, of course it was all pre-covid you know when we were looking at that so um but i i we we sold to somebody that we knew had a, had a positive track record. I think if we give them some time, they're going to be able to right the ship and get some things in order. They're just having a tough transition period is probably the way I would couch it. Well, the, the citizen that was there at the meeting and stuff, even though sometimes it was really hard to hear what he was saying when I was watching it on the video, um, he said something about that some of the units, they didn't have refrigerators or they weren't working correctly or something. And there were leaks, toilets running. And the first thing I thought of is, well, if it were me buying a place like this and there were major problems like this, I would bring it to city's attention. You know, this needs to be fixed. Or are they just destructive tenants? Well, I'm, and I'm not sure the veracity of the complaints always as well. We have to take that into consideration too. But the heritage is out of the city's hands right now, if this new owner doesn't keep things up to par, there's nothing the city can do then, is there? Right. Well, from a rental inspection standpoint, I mean, here's, you know, again, sometimes the devil's in the details. Um, there were at least, what, three, four units, maybe five, I'm not sure. There were a handful of the 120 units that um, we had contractor challenges of our own. So when we have a unit turnover at the Heritage, we would, hire or we have a contractor on who, who would go in and, and do the repair work and in, in good times it would take a month or two for them to get the materials they need and make whatever repairs maybe there's some drywall maybe there's some flooring repairs you know um uh it just depends a new door i mean we've had we've had some of those sorts of things right um the contractor was having challenges turning over units very quickly and getting supplies and things which again is going on across the industry. So as we got closer to our sale date, um, we, we had frequent communication with them to say, 
you're not going to get that unit done, so we're not even going to start you on that project. And then we communicated to the buyer to say, you know, you're not, we're now up to four units. You know, four of the units you're going to get are, are you're going to have to do the repair work. And that was all written into our agreement. So they knew going in that there would be a handful <laughs> of units that they would have to do some work on before they would be rent ready, just so that we didn't start something and weren't able to finish it before the transaction happened. So it could be that the complaint is that there are some problems with some of those very units, you know, and, and I don't know exactly if that's what the, the tenants were complaining about. On top of it, though, repairs are needed, right? And it's an older building, and so there probably were some in the, in the last month or so that we owned the property, and for the last couple of months since we haven't owned it, I'm guessing there probably are some more repairs that need to be done. And if the property manager is a little bit short-staffed, I would guess they're probably not getting on top of it right away. So there's probably a, some, some veracity in, in what you're hearing from some of the tenants. As far as what we now, the city, do with it, we have rental inspectors. And so if, some, if it's an occupied unit, the tenant can complain and the rental inspector can come in and take a look at that particular unit. If it's a vacant unit, they can similarly call up the rental inspector and figure out what they need to do to be able to get it to pass inspection so it can be rented again. Um, you know, I mean, I think at, at our, we are now in the regulatory stage since we're no longer the owner nor operator. So, um, but it's not as if the city, I mean, our inspectors were there when I know they had the garbage challenges and those things too. So, I mean, we can still go out, they, tenants can still call the city and we can come out from a regulatory standpoint if there's bad conditions out there that they'd like someone to take a look at and they call it a complaint inspection. So... Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a remedy in place for I think what the the, the tenants were complaining about, and we can just hope that um, the property manager kind of gets things settled down here in the coming weeks and gets on top of it. So, if a tenant has a complaint, they can call the city and mm -hmm. okay. Yep, that's just, anywhere in the city. Yeah. I just want to say, from our standpoint, from being the manager down there, there are, we didn't leave the building with leaks or missing refrigerators or anything like that. Yeah, there may be, have been a handful of units that needed rehabbed, um, but we never walked away from the building with anything major, no major catastrophe or anything like that. Um, you know, I can't say for sure what's happened since we haven't been there, but um, I don't want it to go out and make right. it look like we left this building in disarray because right. I can tell you from the management standpoint that there was nothing crazy going on like that. Anything else, Joyce? Nope. As long as we have you for a uh, it's not under our purview, but it has to do with housing in Davenport. And uh, I just saw one of those online texts today that the city's adding in some extra money to the DREAM program. Is that DREAM? Oh, the DREAM round three, yeah. Um, okay. And so, I didn't have time to look at it, but I get people who think I know everything about housing. <laughs> I don't by any means, but I usually know who to direct them to. But okay. I just wondered. Uh, yeah, so the quick summary is the DREAM. So you're familiar with the DREAM program and how it works, right? I mean, I can go over that if you want. But um, so this is now, we in May, I believe, we had our application period for the third round of DREAM. And um, I believe today, it must have went out already, um, <laughs> was the announcement of uh, the, the application round. So I think there's 37 or so folks that um, applied. We had over 120 applications, I think. So you have, you know, maybe a one in, one in four chance or so of, of getting it. So it's a very popular program. Um, but um, 37 households, I believe, are, are getting uh, some exterior some funding for exterior repair. Um, and I think in previous rounds, we've done a similar number. So we're now kind of approaching that number. And, and then on top of it, you're probably aware it's a homeowner, new homeowner assistance program, if you will, too. So we have money for up to 10 uh, folks who don't live in the dream area who are looking to buy a home. And they, if they buy a home in the dream area, um, then they can also access that up to $20,000 forgivable loan grant to rehab their house, their, you know, newly purchased house. So, so, um, and we still have money available for that. So, so we have 
homeowners, we have new homeowners coming in. And so yeah, today is kind of an exciting announcement that uh, we, we have a third round of folks who are gonna be, it'll take a few months that most of those projects will likely not start until sometime in 22, 2022. But, um, and we have projects from round two that are finishing up this year um, and projects from round one that they're, they're now all done. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a fun, fun program. Um, lots of, and I feel bad. I, I will just say to you, if any of the listeners out there too, it, if you didn't get awarded, don't give up, you know, it's, it's, there's just a, not enough money to go around. You know I mean? There's just a lot of, how about if you didn't get included in that map? by a couple of blocks. Oh yeah, to change the map. Well, and that's a that's a little bit of a bigger Well, discussion. I heard that at my neighborhood association last week. So Yeah, it, it um and council's aware of that too. It was a for those of you that were part of that debate here 3 4 years ago, it was and there's no right answer of where the area goes, but unfortunately, I mean there are those who would advocate a smaller area allows you more to see money. more revitalization happening. And, and if it's too spread out, you sort of don't even notice anything positive right. going on. And if it's too, but if it's too small of an area, then not very many people, you know, fewer people have the opportunity to apply. So right. it's a catch 22, but. Okay. You said there were 37 that, re, uh, that were okay for this. Do you know mm -hmm. how many of them were uh, previous or homeowners versus new homeowners? I believe all of those. I could be wrong, but I think um, I think we have enough money. And I think the announcement is about the um, existing owners of the new folks. Um, we only can do ten usually each year, and I believe we have at least um, three, four slots left of that. Maybe two or three slots. So, at most that number, that 37 number would have included maybe up to seven existing or uh, new homeowners moving into the area. But I don't think those are commercial. I can get you that, I'll, I'll confirm that. But I think it's just the existing homeowners that were awarded today. Because okay. I know of two families, this was their third try and they both got in. So oh, good. <laughs> they're happy about it. Well, and I, I can tell you this statistic for more trivial pursuit things, but um, 16, I believe of the 37 or so, so almost half, had applied previously, oh, so. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So tell people not to give up the first that's time. That's right. Just keep swimming. <laughs> okay. Keep working. Well, if there's nothing else, it looks like next month, October, would be a 13th. Um, I show the 18th on mine when I, I looked. I kind of glanced. I trust you. I think I still have my glasses on and I usually take them off to read. So a three and an eight can be <laughs> look similar, so. Okay. Well, we'll see people then. I guess I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. I'm going to this morning, but... Uh...